vile una your prayer group haijawahi kuja kwako na hata hata ni kama ushtuki huoni ni abnormo ya kwamba hawa dada mnaomba na hao hawajakutembelea sasa kuna tokea jabu kwako sisi ni wa group yako tunaulizwa kwako ni wapi hatujui unatuembarrass ikiwa hiyo ndio nyumba Mungu amekupatia na hajakuchange si unafurahia na unaleta una wageni wako tu ili sasa ikiwa ndogo tukiwa hatutasoshea unaweza challenge Mungu akuongezee sasa ona bwana and you know the lord has a name to protect for his name's sake hataki kuangkuaibika hata ibika na hata kuaibisha sasa next time tunasema tunakuja kwako prayer group hata ikiwa ni maji tu tachemsha utuwekee kwa meza si tutakunywa na tutafurahi tumekuja kwako na kuna baraka zinakujaga na kutembelewa mnakumbuka Abraham Sara hata ingawa alicheka bado alipata mtoto baada ya banake kutunza wageni labda wewe umeomba umeomba sasa si saa ya kuomba tena ni kuomba na kutenda jambo tukaribishe kwako tutangaze baraka na hiyo milango umekuwa ukiomba ifunguke ifunguke our teenage girls sasa <laughs> these ones unatembelewa na wenzako wametoka ni midterm sasa tuko wiki mzima nyumbani na the beauty is at times they don't have any homework sasa tumekuja sisi tunasomea lines wewe unasomea ga shule yako inaitwa my girls sawa atia gani pangani girls sasa ninafika kwenu mudhale sawa <laughs> Ninafika kwenu na niambia, "Ah, mmekuja, wacha tuone TV." Na mnajua kuna matunda kitchen, yule anajisikia, unaweza enda uoshe na ukatakate, muokoke wa dada teenagers. Kwenu ni kwenu, please behave and host your visitors. Sawa sawa. Host your visitors and enjoy hosting them. They may know where the kitchen is, but please go and wash those fruits, ukatakate na uwalete kwa meza. Si ni wageni wako tumeokoka ehe na chai upike ati sasa unajua najua haa kunywa chai si wet ulete wakataye kunywa sasa unawasemea unakaa kama my grandmother alikuwa anasema najua huyu atakagi hii food hupewi na unaja na nakusemea hukuli na unaenda nyumbani na njaa wewe tuokoke kuanzia leo bwana wabariki na atende mema na muendelee vizuri He has given me he has given and the song that i sing he has given me he has given and the joy that i have me he has given and the sister that i have he has given me he has given me He has given me given me
listening. I will sing to him a thank you song. He has given me. He has given me. And the church that we have. He has given. I will praise the Lord with all my heart. My soul, I will praise Him. I will sing to Him a thank you song. He has given me. Has given me Hall things that are inclined towards um, us being better daughters of impact. Remember when we talk about daughters of impact, we are saying you go somewhere, you leave a mark because of the way you carry yourself. Our sister Elizabeth Congo started us off on some very simple behaviors that can leave an impact. And I, I could see some wars Pass, being passed with from mother and daughters. Kuna dota moja alikuwa anafanya mama ake hivyo. Alifikiria, ya yedi alikuja kwa bia Elizabeth Kongo what to say. And I can assure you if you are the one, mama kwa jaugea na Elizabeth Kongo. So if it is wrong, it is wrong. We are here to correct, to learn, so that we can be better daughters. Sawa, sawa. We can be better daughters, we can be better workers, we can be better wives when that time comes. Remember, you'll get married one day, but you're not just growing to being a wife. It is a process. And with that preparation, we are preparing ourselves to become better. And no matter where you are, even if you are a grandmother, there is room for improvement. Sawa, sawa. Therefore, this afternoon, we are privileged. We have our speaker with us. Our speaker also happens to be a writer, and she has written very nice books. Eh? I, think that, I think this is what the Lord wanted us to... She has written books that look relevant to our talk pick this afternoon. The first book is, is called Celebrating Friendship Among Women. Ladies are known of Kukosana Maramingi, Sijuri Nisegenya, Sijuri Uriongea Juyangu, Sijuri Fanya Nini, but we can celebrate, celebrating friendship among women, the power of true women, true women connections, true. Maybe you are hurt because you are in the wrong connection. It's, the book goes for 1,000 shillings, but courtesy of Daughters of Impact, today it will go for 500. We can appreciate our speaker. Imagine. Discount 50% pop. The other book is called Our Values, Our Destiny. Remember, social maturity is all about values. Has a lot to do with our values. Our values shape us. I was uh, flipping through the book and I got a, a, a interested on a statement she, it, which is written somewhere that no matter your age, nobody minds hide people around them. So it doesn't matter whether you're in high school or you are a grandmother of 10 or a mother of how many. Kindness is across the board. And we all like, love kindness. Therefore, these books will be on sale outside there. Each one of them is 500 shillings. And I want to believe we can, you can make yourself better. Books will shape you. My prayer is that no wonder we have got books. We want to be people who are informed. We want people who can write notes. When you have been impacted, you can go out there and impact others. So you can do that. What you learn, go tomorrow to where you work and share with other ladies. And tell them, make an impact, leave a mark. Sawa, sawa. Therefore, without much ado, can I be very sincere? I have met the speaker for the very first time in my life today. Therefore, however, I've come to know she's my neighbor. I've also come to know she worships in a church not very far from me. I can walk there if I want. 
Therefore, but she'll tell us maybe more about herself. Therefore, without much ado, I want all of us to arise and welcome our speaker this afternoon, Marjorie Kabuya. Come on, make her welcome. <laughs> Make her welcome. Amen. Thank you so much for saying yes to our invitation. And we know we have, you have our message. Amen. We can pray for her. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you. We lift our sister before you. She's your mouthpiece this afternoon. We pray the Lord, everything that you have put in her for us, that God you'll give her clarity that she'll be able to communicate the same to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'll leave her to tell us more about herself, even as we sit down and enjoy our talk this afternoon. Amen. Amen. God is good? And all the time? That's his nature. I am very happy to be here today. Like uh, your mom says, I, she doesn't know me because I'm not the one who was supposed to be here. Yeah. My friend who I pray with every Wednesday is supposed to be here, but she was going out of the country and she says, Marjorie, I have accepted an invitation to speak at the Deliverance Church. I cannot miss and not replace myself, so will you go for me? And I said, Sawa. And therefore, I am here. But you know, with God, there are no accidents. <clears throat> so I think I am the one who was supposed to be here. <laughs> Otherwise, Jacinta would not have gone away. And whenever God does something, he has a plan. And he doesn't send people somewhere without a plan. So I don't know what his plan is for all of us, but he has one. And because his plan is always good for us, we can believe that uh, what we are going to learn or what we are going to discuss has something to do with something he wants us to learn and to do. So I want to thank the leadership of this church for accepting somebody that they do not know to come and stand on their pulpit, that's normally a risk, but I'm not, going to, I'm not going to do anything out of ordinary because I am a woman who is saved. I worship at the Baptist Church in Ridgeways and uh, I love God because he first loved me. And I am a woman who believes in what I saw your vision is. Again, I have never seen this until two minutes ago and I read your vision, and it says to inspire and develop every daughter to be a world changer. And the mission says, empower ladies to extend the transforming presence of Jesus Christ to their communities and the environment they live in. I believe in those things completely. My career over 25 years, and I won't dwell on my past, was to work in an NGO that served needy children and communities. So I have worked all over this country, especially in the poorer parts of the country, traveled all over. Mostly we were educating girls who were disadvantaged, who had no opportunity to go to school. I know we all assume everybody goes to school and it is easy, but it is not. So one of the things that um, I am known for is uh, being very passionate about uh, daughters in pastoral areas, and I have been responsible in doing, God has helped me to do many things in that area. Once I was in CNN for starting a project that is called uh, Booking Girls for School, instead of Booking Girls for Marriage. We started a school that uh, whose aim was to bring in 1,000 girls, saving them from early marriages. And we even got some from situations where they had already been taken by a husband. We got them back, and I am glad to say we just graduated from university the first three, two years ago. 
that's all I'm going to say about myself because uh, I am interested. I was just saying that to say I am interested very much in the empowerment of women because I believe women who are empowered, especially Christian women who are empowered, are what is going to transform society. You know why? Because women are the ones who train both girls and boys. As mothers, whether you are foster mother, whether you are real mother, whatever, mothers, women, we are the ones who pass on values to our children. So we are the ones who impact the society. And one of my main concerns right now, that's why I really also accepted to come, is because I think women at this time in Kenya need to think very carefully about the impact. See, you are being daughters of impact. About the impact we are having in our society. That is why I wrote this second book. And the reason I made it 500 is so that you can buy it, not because of the money that it's going to bring, but because we as Kenyans need to start revisiting ourselves. You know, we have to ask where the rain started to beat us. Because the rain has beat us, eh? Ukisoma gazeti leo, utasomaji. Ukisoma jana, ukisoma juzi, ukisoma mwataka uliopita. The kind of problems that we have, I am saying in this book, will not be solved by being taken to court. Of course, it's a very good idea to go to court and actually be imprisoned for mistakes. But that is not the solution. The solution is to look within. Because everything that we do, like I will show, comes from inside. Sindivo. So it is we have to look at what are we putting inside our children, number one, and what are we there for getting out. So I'm saying basically in 200 pages that our solution is going to come from our values. Relooking, revisiting, going back. We used to be in a good place. Going back to where we were in our values. Because it is those values that are going to determine our destiny. Many of you are much younger than me. And uh, when we got independence, we used to, there, we had three big problems. Poverty, what was the other? Literacy, illiteracy. Poverty, illiteracy, and disease. Correct? Yeah, you are my age. Poverty, illiteracy, <laughs> and... <laughs> Oh, you know things about my poverty, literacy. And now, which are the three main problems? Corruption. Corruption with impunity. Insecurity. And division. Division according to tribe, according to class, according to where you live, what car you drive. Division. Especially according to tribe, according to religion, and many things. And my point is that we haven't finished with the first three big problems, and now we've gone and added another three. And we need to start looking within in order to change. So when I was told about coming to talk about social maturity, I said, yes, that's a good idea because that is what this country means. Not social maturity in the simple sense. I have a working definition which is being emotionally psychologically, spiritually, adult, and wise enough to think, to speak, to know, and to do the appropriate or the right thing in relationship to yourself and to others. Because you know social is about other. It's how you relate to other. So that is my working definition today 
of what social maturity is. And social is how your behavior, after you have thought and spoken and known what you do, the impact it has on others. So I think it's really a very appropriate. That's why I'm saying God doesn't make any mistakes. Because you are daughters of what? You are daughters of impact. So what impact are you having on your neighbor, on your child, on your in-law? The one you are told to come and give water. That no matter whether they had told you, Sindhivo meambiwa. Kama anakuja, anakuja. What impact are we having on those? What impact are we having as Christian women? Do people know we are Christians? People know we are Christians by our actions. Because we have impact on them. Human existence is about relationship and fellowship. Relationship with the self, relationship with God, relationship with the family, relationship with the community, and relationship with the world. Relationships make our lives richer, easier, happier, and worthwhile. Relationships are necessary for our emotional well-being. You know, one of the greatest punishments in the world is isolation. You've heard of isolation wards, isolation cells in prison. That's the worst possible punishment you can give a human being. Because you are saying they should not, they will not, you are cutting them off from relating to another human being. That is because we were created by God to be social beings. That's why we are born within a family. And that's why we also have to be brought up. Do you know we are the only creature created that has to stay with their mother for several years to be taught some social skills. An elephant is bought, and of course elephants are the second to us. By the way, the story of elephants is completely different. I shouldn't use them as an example. Elephants are very good, very rich families. Most animals, you are born in two days or one, you walk, and in a week or so, you are gone. But we human beings, because we are about relationships, we stay within a family. God gives us people around us to show us how to relate to people. That's what I mean when I say life for a human being is about relationships. So this whole social impact topic is very important because that's what makes us human. And therefore we have to learn how to relate to people in a humane way. There is a picture I wanted to put on the board, I don't know whether it is there, of a lady, I don't know whether the media people have it, of a lady in a wedding dress. If you have it, you can put it on the board. Are you seeing it? What do you think about that picture? What are the three or four words you can use? Quickly, just somebody. Beautiful? What? What word then? Disgusting. Another word? Eh? Naked. Another one? Indecent. Another one? Embarrassing. Another one? Okay. Now, the, a picture speaks a thousand words. Uh, you have used many words, and most of them are not positive. Sindivo, Aya, where do you think this girl is going? Where is she going? She's probably going to church. See, weddings are normally in church. So she's probably going to church. 
or she's going, wherever she's going, there are many people there. What do you think? Okay, do you think this girl thought what, about what she's wearing? She thought. <laughs> and she arrived at this. After thinking, she said, this is a good idea. And this is how I am going to this is how I am going to church. And this is how I am going to wed. Whether they are, who is normally in, in a church, wed, in a wedding? Parents, pastors, young boys, young girls, men, women, grandmothers, everybody's in a wedding. And she thought about all that. So you have to really confirm to me that she thought. She thought about all those people and she dressed like this. Okay. That is why I think this, is, this discussion is not about her dress. It is about her values. It's not about her dress. I said, everything that comes out of us comes from inside of us. This dress her lack of consideration for the people she's meeting, her refusal to be kind to her grandmother or even mother because of the embarrassment is coming from inside of her. Either she doesn't care what people think or she doesn't know because nobody has ever told her. But you can discuss so many things. We could spend an hour just discussing why a girl makes a decision like this, going where she's going on an important date like this one. So I want you to keep that in mind. Please remove it. We don't want it to attract too much attention. Uh, values. That's why I said, you know, when I, when I received that, I was sent in uh, this group, WhatsApps, and um, I said, Oh, she doesn't have a friend. Poor girl. She doesn't have a friend, I said. And then another person in the group said, no, this one cannot be saved. Her embarrassment. Yani, she, she looked at the picture and gave up completely. I, on the other hand, was thinking, if she just had a good friend, if she just had a mentor, they would have stopped her. And I'm going to talk a bit about that later. Right now, I just want to talk about values. Because values, and there's another, I had something from a page five on values that I wanted you to put up. Oh. Ah, that's the, I took the wrong book. Thank you, dear. What are values? Values are attributes. They are qualities, they are ideals, they are ethical standards that are considered desirable and inherently good. Good is the right word for society. So what is the importance of values? Just three. Values, they help us articulate who we are. So that, that uh, photo is showing who that girl is. They articulate who we are, what we stand for, and how we would like the world to view us. Two, values build character, which in turn produces behavior that is beneficial to individuals as well as to the community. And thirdly, values prevent harm to individuals and to society. And that's a definition that I have given here. Uh, values are the foundations that build our attitude and that give us character. 
and that determine our behavior. Values help determine our thoughts and therefore determine our choices. There are many values that help determine our behavior, yani how we dress, how we talk, how we deal with problems, all those things are determined by values. Some of the values include respect. Was that lady respectful, do you think? A responsibility. Was she behaving in a responsible manner? Was she kind? So there are many values. In this values book, for instance, I have covered 12 values. And what I have done in this book, because I wanted it to be read by anybody and everybody, I have explained what each of those values is and what it means. There is a value of peace, of love, of respect, of honesty, of integrity, of tolerance, of compassion or kindness, that's the one mom read, of responsibility, of humility, of justice, and of unity. How do you teach values? How do, how do values happen? Guess. By example, yes. How else do they happen? Mentorship, very good word. I'll come back to that. Yes. Yeah. Model. Modeling, yes. Somebody showing you as an example. They do the right thing so you learn how to do the right thing. Yes, there are many ways of teaching values. And the one thing I want to say about values today to you is that you sitting here, being a woman, being a mother or a potential mother, being a Christian woman, you are more responsible for teaching values than anybody else. Whether it is modeling, the way we've been told, whether it's mentoring, the way somebody else has said, whether it's showing by example, whichever method, you are responsible for it. And we must go back to the motherhood or to the Christian woman of impact that remembers that we are the ones that are responsible. I came to the Swahili service, to the last service, and, and God is really good because the pastor said, uh, you know the way you are trying to teach your children to behave properly, you know, like other children you see. And he said, he asked a couple, they asked a couple with their wife, how do you make your children behave so well? Yani they are not climbing windows and under uh, chairs, embarrassing you in front of everybody. And he was told, toxology? <laughs> yes. I never heard those words before, so you were there also, you had. Sasa, I said, you know, that is so, so, so correct. That is absolutely correct. And you know one of the things that we have stopped doing? Mm -hmm. Actually, we've actually stopped doing both. Or we are not doing them as much as we should. But we've stopped talking. Women talk a lot. You know, women talk 25,000 words as opposed to men 6,000 words a day. We talk a lot. What are we talking about? We need to think about that. He said toxology. Yani unaongea, unamaliza, unaanza tena, kesho unaamkia, following day unaamkia, unaongea mbaka watoto wanachoka. But let me tell you, I remember one day, I told my friend, my daughter was probably seven, eight. I gave birth late. So the second, the one who came after her was five years younger. I didn't really think my first daughter listens that much. So one day the younger sister was doing something wrong. And I was sitting there 
and I had her repeat word by word what I had told her. And I was sitting there with my friend and I was very surprised. I said, did you actually hear what she said? I never even thought she had, because first of all, she doesn't do <laughs> what she's saying, but apparently she had because she's telling her sister what to do. So that toxology thing works. And now I go to see her sometimes. She lives in Australia and she has a five-year-old daughter also. And I hear her saying exactly the same thing that I used to say. The one she didn't used to listen to. But so we cannot stop talking. I just want to emphasize what the pastor said today. You cannot, as a mother, stop talking. And of course, you cannot stop praying for your children. You've never seen a generation that needs prayers more than this one. This one. They need more prayers than anything. So those are two things that are completely relevant. They were told that maybe 30 years ago, but it, it needs to be repeated today. And I was very glad. Again, I told you there are no accidents. I was supposed to come to the 9 o'clock service. I came to the 11 o'clock. Maybe it was the same, but I had that and I needed to hear that. And it is good to be reminded. So values are taught by parents. They are also taught by schools and the community and the, and the church. But mostly, 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 they are taught at home. They are modeled at home. You can't tell your child to stop drinking when you are drinking. You can't tell your child to stop cheating. You know, mama yuko api, oh, muambia sa yuko. Sasa wa unamuambia mtoto aseme hauko. Na uko. So you are teaching the child how to. Alafu akikuambia, ukimuliza, kwani ulikuwa wapi? Nimekuwa na ukinyo wa sigara. Apana sikuwa ni kinyo wa sigara. She's doing exactly the same thing that you are doing. So you can't quarrel her. So we must teach, we must model the right values. One of the things, especially for young mothers who are here and those who are still not mothers. I wish somebody had told me this when I was younger. When you get married or when you have children, decide, sit down with a pen and paper and decide which values are priority for you and your home. The reason that I think it is so important is because when you have decided these five, respect is, nobody has an option here, is non-negotiable. In my home, respect is not negotiable. You cannot answer adults, you cannot talk back, when they get in the house, you stand and you give them tea, you behave. That is not negotiable. You must decide which your five are. Humility. You cannot insult a worker. You cannot answer a worker just because you think you are richer than them. It is, there are things that are non negotiable. You cannot do. And it is amazing, by the way, children know. Have you had children who say, eh, <laughs> baba ataniwa, au mama. They know. Children know what is non-negotiable. They do the things that they think they can get away with. So don't make non-negotiable like 20. That's too much. Nobody will obey all that. But if you make a few very important things non-negotiable and say in this home, you can even write them on the fridge or on the board in the sitting room. I say these ones, if you do these ones, I'll have a problem with you. Children learn. We have to be the ones that decide what our values are and how we will teach them. People whose lives are not built on values, they are spiritually battered and are bruised. They live lives without happiness and fulfillment. 
That is why people spend a lot of money changing their color of the hair, their noses, their breasts. You know, people are changing everything that God gave them. And they are still unfulfilled. They spend their lives trying to impress others. And they are into a lot of self-deception and blaming of others. That is because they lack a moral compass to help them make decisions. It is values that give you a moral compass. They are the ones that give you boundaries. That's the most important thing about values. They give you boundaries. They say, utafika hapa, lakini hawezi kupita hapa. You know the British, Britain does not have a written constitution. They do not have a written constitution. But the British are the most constitutional people in the world. You know why? Because they know. They are trained. A British man or woman will tell you, we do not do that. It's not written anywhere. They grew up knowing. That's what successful values training does. You don't need to read it by the time you are 40 or 30. You know we should find a way to make this country grow in such a way that tribalism is not an option. And children will not be told. They will know. Insulting adults is not an option. They know. Sinilisema think, speak, know, and do. Values are to be taught in such a way that you know the right thing to do. Teach your children your values. Everyone wants a loving and fulfilling relationship with their spouse and children. And yet we unwisely do so many things that tear down our families. That is why I have said I believe in values so much. I think they are so important that there is a whole book on them. And put, now you can put that, uh, the media people can put that uh, saying on the wall. I want to end this part of values with a quote from Mahatma Gandhi. Your beliefs become your thoughts, how you think. Your thoughts become your words, how you speak. Your words become your actions, what you do. Your action becomes your habit, what you do all the time. And your habits become your values or your character. And your values become your destiny. Because your character in the final analysis is what will determine how you dress, how you talk, how you relate to people, whether you insult people at work, whether you are talking to your mother, whether you are rude to your father, whether you are talking to your brother, whether you choose to take drugs or not, whether you choose to drink, all those will be determined by that list. Thank you very much. Let's move on. I want to move on to the third thing that I want to talk to about, which is communication. I can spend the whole day on values, so I better leave it at that. Following the logic of that quote, let's talk a little bit about how we communicate, because this is the major way that shows whether we are socially mature or not. Communication is critical in developing good relationships. Communication is getting through to another party. Nina kuongelesha umenisikia have you understood? You have heard me. Have you understood me? If you have just heard me, like now, you can hear me. What will change your behavior is whether you have understood me. If you have heard me and you haven't understood me, it won't change things. 
a lot of times, our failure in communication or in relationship, all of us, is that we are unable to get through to other people. So that our ideas or our counsel is rejected. Mostly because it has been ineffectively passed or unpersuasively communicated. I can talk with you, I can either persuade you or succeed in persuading you. Like when a mother tells, well, like that girl, maybe the mother said, I that dress. You know, she could have done so many things with that dress and it would have been okay. These days, there are all those uh, shangas that fill a whole place so you don't see. Or a scarf, or like a small jacket. She could have done so many things that would have changed that dress. But she would have had to listen to somebody. And somebody would have had to love her enough to stop her from doing that. But I'll get to that. So communication, I have to be able to persuade you. Communication is the number one problem in relationships. And I'm sure you've heard this before. Whether it is in marriage, whether it's between you and your parents, whether it's between high school girls, like they will tell you in school, their friends, they are not getting on, they are not understanding each other. It's what we say. That's the content. And how we say it can have a life-changing impact on people. So even as we discuss value and we discuss social maturity or we try to correct somebody, how we communicate that is very important. You can communicate in such a way that you are not understood because you are not clear. Or you communicate na madharao hata yuli ya ulikuwa kiambia hata sikia. Na hata kama amesikia hata fanya. So you know, kids who say, oh, I had, but I'm not going to do it. You know? And the reason I'm saying children and young people is because, see, they are the immature one. You remember my definition of uh, maturity? You have to be adult enough and wise enough to process these things. If you remember how sometimes we talk to children, they say, ah, I won't do it. Oh, I had. Nimesikia nikiitwa, lakini wacha nicheze kidogo nikai kai. So our communication is affected by gender or age. If the president was coming and was going to, you were going to talk to him, if you were told you were going to state house to speak to the president, how would you prepare? So you would prepare more carefully than if you were coming to talk to me. Yeah. So depending on who you are talking to, if you are talking to your father, it's not the same thing as if you are talking to your younger brother or sister. If you are talking to the pastor, if you are talking to an adult, if you are talking to a teacher. So communication, you have to think who it is for, who, I, who is listening to you. And our words, what do you say? And we are at a generation where, well, first of all, we, sometimes old people don't even understand what the young people are saying. But also, the young people don't even bother to choose their words a little more carefully. So how we communicate is also important. And what we say. Our tone of voice. How? If you are shouting, if two people are shouting when they are talking to each other, not much is achieved in terms of listening and understanding each other. Your communication can extinguish anger or escalate answer. Anger. The communication can wound others or heal others. I had one of your talks earlier on in the year was about beyond the wounds. So I imagine it was beyond when somebody has hurt you. People remember hurtful words 50 years later. But words of praise and of encouragement and of appreciation and understanding, they help to heal. One study in the U.S. suggested that the stronger a, personal, a person's relationships are, the happier that they are. And good communication creates and maintains good relationships and good friendship. Your communication can infuse life into a person's spirit 
by just talking to them, you can give them life. You can encourage and uplift them. Or it can bring them down. You know, it is the book of James that talks about, James 3, I think, from 1 to 12, talks about the need to tame our tongue. It talks about our tongue being, can cause a fire. So our tongue can destroy. Especially as mothers when we are talking to children and when we are talking to younger people, even when we are talking to our husbands sometimes, we have to be careful about what comes from our mouth because that can harm or it can cause conflict and even war within a family. Never tear each other down. Avoid gossip. Fortify people's self-esteem instead of bringing it down. And read the book of James. I said I would give you some homework. Are we still there? Okay. I would ask you to read four books today. Not today, of course. The book of James has only five chapters. And they are even not too long. At some point, read the book of James. It's a very small book, and it's a very good book on communication. How to use the tongue. How to be mature in what you say. So read the book of James at some point this year. You can even read it when you are in a car. If your husband is driving or somebody else, you will finish by the time you get to the city. It's a short book, but it's a very good thing. And amongst the things he talks about is the power of the tongue. The need to tame it because it says in verse 6, if somebody can put up James, verse, James 3 verse 6, it says the tongue corrupts the whole person and sets the whole course. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature or determines how your life will go. So please, let's remember how important communication is. And now, the last part of this talk will be about, so if somebody is not psychologically, emotionally, and therefore socially mature, how can we help them? Because the role of, uh, of us as Christian women, or people who are growing up to be uh, Christian women, all of us young people, even the young people who are here, those ones who stood in high school, the fact that they know God, the fact that they were brought to church, they are also helpful for their peers. Like we were told, all of us are daughters of somebody, so all of us are responsible for other people. So how can we help each other to become more spiritually mature, more mature, socially mature. I have only, uh, I'm only going to discuss three strategies, although there are many others. And the first one is wisdom. To acquire wisdom. We need to become wise daughters by developing wisdom. You remember King Solomon when he was asked by God because he became a king when very young, he was asked, what do you want? What did he say? Give me wisdom so I can rule your people properly. He didn't say money. So of course he ended up being not only the wisest person in the world, but the richest person in the world. Do you know they still say that if you calculated all Solomon's lands and golds and there is still not anybody, even Microsoft, as rich as Solomon. Because he asked for the most important thing from God, so God gave him everything else. 
Now, wisdom, we are told to look for it, search for it, as if we are searching for gold. It's the most important thing that we have. That is why it is my first strategy for helping other people and helping ourselves to become more socially uh, wise. And the homework for this, the other book, I told you I would ask you to read four books for the rest of the year or the other two years. Uh, you might not see me again, so you can even take four years, but read those four books. <laughs> uh, read the book of Proverbs, please. In fact, I was told this a long time ago by um, somebody who I respect a lot, a mentor. They said, read the book of Proverbs Read two chapters a day and keep doing it for two years. Yani you wake up, una, unasoma Proverbs 1, 2, Kesho 3, 4, unamaliza, unaanza tena. I was told to do it for two years. Of course, being who I am, I am not as obedient as most people. I read it for a year. Like any year is not bad, eh? I read it for a year and I learned a lot. So those of you who can read it for two years, please do. Those of you who can read it for one, please do. Those of you who can do for six months or three months, but at least read it once. Once only, go through it. I'm not saying study, studying a book takes forever. Read, soma too. Something 